go to our seventh item on the agenda, other business. We have a presentation by Whitney Shepherd from the Metropolitan Planning Organization on our 2040 social economic data. Yes, ma'am, and I was actually going to introduce Corey, our okay. EMPO coordinator, to officially introduce Ms. Whitney and welcome her into our meeting. Very much appreciate y'all being willing to hear her and hear him. And without further ado, Mr. Corey, if you would. Thank you, everyone. It's good to be back here again, um, making a habit of this coming up pretty coming months now. Um, I want to thank you guys for having us again um, tonight. What I talked about last week and last month, <coughs> unveiling our 2040 socioeconomic data that the Hollis Allowed the Metropolitan Planning Organization has been developing, along with Whitney and her staff at the Transport Studio. Uh, they were a firm that we hired uh, earlier this year to develop a new uh, population and employment uh, forecast for Lowndes County, Berrien County, Brooks County, and Lowndes County for transportation planning and land use planning purposes in these communities. In Lowndes County, we have to go very in-depth for purposes of developing the new comprehensive plan that Lowndes County is going to have to develop here in the next uh, two years. So she's going to present some of that information tonight and give you guys a glimpse of where we are going to be in uh, the year 2040 population and employment wise. Just so you know that there is, besides the report that we will be publishing tomorrow um, and the data she's going to present tonight, we do have lots and lots of spreadsheets and other data that staff will be able to use to provide more information uh, specifically about a very area of the community and growth and development over the next 25 years. Thank you very much, and uh, pretty Thank you. Good evening. My name is Whitney Shepherd. I'm with Transport Studio. I'm the project manager of the 2040 Socioeconomic Data Study, and I, I thank you for your time. <laughs> Essentially tonight, I'm just going to talk about the study, um, why um, we collect data and project your population and employment growth into the future and what our process was like, and then show you some of the results uh, for your review and discussion. As you all know, you need data about population and employment in your region in order to plan well. I'm sure you're fairly comfortable with many um, of the statistics that I'll be showing you. Um, and you need to understand what your growth may be like in the future in order to determine the need for infrastructure improvements and services out to your planning horizon. We also developed data to comply with federal and state regulations, both governing transportation planning and comprehensive planning in order for uh, your local jurisdictions to maintain qualified local government status. And as you may know, um, in particular within the last year, the state has made significant changes to their planning requirements as they impact you. And that has greatly reduced the amount of data that you need to collect as part of your community assessments at the local government level for your comprehensive plans. That being said, because you will still be continue to you'll still be required to develop comprehensive plans, and because data is essential for good planning, um, I think rightly so, you I've still been asked to develop uh, a significant amount of data for your planning efforts. Um, so we looked again at population housing and employment data, first off starting with the latest census in 2010 and then looking how that may have changed between 2010 and today. And then we projected that data out to 2040, which is both your planning horizon for the upcoming long range transportation plan as well as uh, comprehensive planning efforts. And then we were asked to develop interim year projections, so starting in 2010 and five-year increments out to 2040, we developed additional projections. Before I go any further, I do want to point out that um, our effort primarily results in a fairly large database of both base year data in 2010 and future year data. Um, so this is one component, an initial component, along with the visioning exercises that you're going through right now. Um, that will lead to additional planning efforts. So the analysis uh, that you should be looking forward to hasn't yet begun. We focus primarily on 
two flavors of data. The first for your long range transportation plan in order to meet federal requirements and um, supply inputs for your travel demand model in the region. And the second, more detailed data set for comprehensive planning efforts. So again, we started in 2010, then developed the future year control totals by county. And then we looked at some specific small areas within your county at the traffic analysis zone level, the census tract level, and the census block group level, and distributed that growth to those small areas. We went through a couple of rounds of revisions with staff input, and then developed interim year data that was consistent with the growth between 2010 and 2040 that we expect. One of our first steps was to look at population projections from various sources for Lowndes County. And I just want to point out a couple of those that are in the figure. Um, what's shown in orange there has been developed in the past by the Department of Community Affairs based on data from 1980 to 2000. So that's sort of the lower bound of the population projections for the county. And the set of blue dots that arc up as you get out to 2050 were developed um, by the Carl Vincent Institute for the Office of Planning and Budget for water planning purposes. And those tend to be uh, within 20 or 30 percent higher than all of the other projections. So what we did <coughs> as your consultant was take a look at past growth from 1980 to 2010, so we updated the historic growth, and then developed a new projection a linear trend based on that historic data, and that's shown in red on this graphic. And here in more detail, you can see the previous four census years, your population in the county, and then how that projects out, assuming a linear trend, um, which results in Lowndes County having a population right around 150,000 in 2040, your horizon year. Of course, we had to make some significant assumptions to get to that point. And as you saw on that graphic, the biggest assumption was that your, your historic growth trend would continue out to 2040. We also assumed that household and employment growth would follow the population growth trend. So essentially that the number of people in each household on average and the number of jobs per person on average would stay consistent in the county. Um, and we did have some discussions about that, but given no reason to assume an instability in that assumption, we carried it into the future. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the detailed characteristics as well in the next couple of slides. Um, but first, I want to show you the numbers, the meat. Uh, in 2010, the population reported in Lowndes County was just over 109,000 people and almost 4,000 households. And you had a total employment reported of over 54,000. Assuming that linear population growth trend and um, the resulting trend in household and employment growth you'll be at almost 150,000 people in 2040 with 76,000 jobs. And how we describe those 150,000 people um, is also an important part of the planning process. So this is an example of the population characteristic that we projected for the year 2040 horizon. The first four columns show the last four census years and how the racial composition of Lowndes County has changed over time. And then we assume that, that composition would follow a linear pattern into the future. So as you move into the planning process, this data will be very useful um, for you to help you understand what your future growth may look like. Another example, this time of a housing characteristic that shows housing types, um, single family, multifamily, manufactured homes, and, and other housing types. And again, based on those, the previous four census years, we assumed that, that those trends would continue in a linear fashion out to the future. So we did develop this kind of detailed data, um, not only at the countywide level, which is shown here in this graph, but also at the census tract, census block group, and traffic analysis zone level. The next several slides um, give you a little more detail about how we distributed growth to all of those small areas. And one of our major assumptions was how your future growth patterns um, would be out to 2040. And staff provided us with this information, identifying growth areas by land use type, as shown here, by time frame of likely development, as shown here, where the longer range developments are shown in blue, and the short term development shown in yellow, with a mid range in red and purple on this map. 
and they also gave us some information about the likely capacity or intensity of those growth areas, with the lowest capacity shown in the lighter colors there, um, medium capacity in red, and high capacity in the darker color. So um, step by step what we did was we looked at land in the county that's already developed or is not suitable for development because of some conservation purpose and taking into account redevelopment or a land that's likely to redevelopment, redevelop, we then um, created a data set of land suitable for future development and overlaid those growth areas that you just saw on the land suitable for development so that we could characterize all of the areas that may grow in the future and then that is how we allocated future population and employment to the small areas. To give you a quick example of one small area, this is a traffic analysis zone in the county, and you can see how the boundary cuts some of the growth areas um, so that we could then calculate the amount of area within a growth area. Um, we then overlay that with the land that's suitable for development to calculate acres by growth area and included some other parameters, including access to existing water and sewer service that are likely to influence growth, so that within each zone we have a tabulation of how much of the, of the acreage in that zone lies within a growth area um, and whether or not it has access to water or sewer service. So then we could assign population and, how, and housing and jobs based on the kind of growth <coughs> areas. So for example, the commercial growth areas, which are highlighted in red there, would be assigned jobs. Um, and the next several slides are just our results. And starting with 2010, this is your base year population. This is a raw population count by traffic analysis zones. So of course the larger zones are darker in general. Uh, what's perhaps more useful is looking at population density. So this is your base year data. And clearly Valdosta is the center of your population growth with some denser areas along your major corridors. And if we uh, look at 2040, you can see how that changes over time. So from 2010 to 2040, you've got some areas becoming more dense. And that's because of these growth areas. The areas that are becoming more dense in 2040 are all residential growth areas. Similarly, looking at employment density, you have um, some focused employment around the center of your county, as well as at Moody Air Force Base. And as that changes over time, areas become more densely employed based on the, the growth areas. So I can go back and you can see the commercial, industrial, institutional growth areas all have jobs assigned to them from 2010 here to 2040 moving forward. And based on that process, um, we did find, I guess I should say, first of all, it, it was an iterative process for us. We made a first round of assumptions, allocated growth, and then compared that growth to the control totals that we projected and changed some of our assumptions of, uh, um, in order to match the control totals. So we did find that, in general, the identified growth areas will accommodate all of your projected growth to 2040. Um, we assigned some households to areas that are already zoned residential if they have existing access to water or sewer service. That seems reasonable given your, your trends in the past. Uh, we also assign some service jobs, which are typically, service jobs are the largest job category within the travel demand model. If, if the job's not retail, manufacturing, or wholesale, then it qualifies as a service job. Um, and we assign some service jobs to areas, again, with existing access to water or sewer service that were zoned appropriately for that. Uh, otherwise, your growth areas accommodate all of your future growth. And in fact, your industrial growth areas identified by staff have more land than will be needed by 2040 to accommodate the manufacturing and wholesale jobs that we were assigning. Uh, finally, um, we recommend that in the future, your MPO take a look at census boundaries and their traffic analysis zone boundaries. There are some areas where they're not um, identical or they don't overlap completely and it should help you uh, as you move forward with the planning process if, if all of those boundaries are, are consistent. Um, first of all, it should help the census take a more accurate count in your area, which is very important for funding. Um, and certainly the local update, a update of census addresses is, is the appropriate time to do that. Um, secondly, we recommend that the growth areas identified be evaluated 
during the upcoming comprehensive planning process, and a good tool to do that is your MPO travel demand model. Since all of this data will be consistent across the transportation plan and the comprehensive plan, you can certainly use the model um, to evaluate particular growth scenarios, whether you want to look at, for example, um, how, that is, how the industrial growth areas may develop over time and test certain scenarios with your travel demand model. Um, of course, you can also test or evaluate policies and development patterns through the comprehensive planning process, as you should. And then finally, just that the MPO um, and planning staff continue to coordinate with the Air Force Base and other major employers moving forward to help make sure that this data is updated over time. Uh, we know that this data is just a snapshot today and that it will change as you move forward in the future onto future plans. With that, I'd like to open it up for any questions. Do we have any questions for the presenter? There was a slide that you put up for the little before you started with the breakdown of the yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. Where it said the developable land by growth area. What what are the different colors? The, the so those actually um would be more helpful if I oops. So those colors are um these colors as well, although slightly intensified. So they represent the type of growth area. So in yellow, you see the residential growth areas. So can you go back to that slide again? Because that was really terrible. It's mm -hmm. yes. The orange is actually yellow. It's just where I've seen it. It's right, I just intensified it. And, okay. so and, it's residential, and the, mm -hmm. the red is commercial. Yes, and I did add emphasis there, just so you could see it in the diagram. What, the green is the developable land. It's developable land that's not within an identified growth area. And in the technical report, there are, um, these maps are in the appendix without the text boxes over them, so that you can so put them all if you wanted to. The dark green up there and the light green and this one, those basically are negatives of each other. Um, if you put this, if you take that image, the one with the bottom right, overlay it on the top one, the, the green, the dark, and they're actually the same land area, so the land suitable for development is overlaid with growth areas. If you look at the top two, left and right, those yeah. positive and negative. Those are positive and negative. Yeah. Yeah. So we used um, ArcMap GIS for, for all of this analysis and then tested it in, in a spreadsheet model to make sure that you're meeting the control totals. Any other questions? Ms. Whitney, when you went through and um, assuming this is not your uh, the first time you've done analysis like this, did something in the data, uh, was it unique to Lowndes County as compared to some of the other communities that you've had a chance to work with? Uh, well, what was unique were the kind of parameters that we used to assign growth. So it was actually really nice to have such clear growth areas identified, um, you know, by intensity, by time frame and by use. Um, there are a fair number of communities where we spend most of our time doing this part, and you all gave that to me, which was really nice. Um, and then the other parameters, such as access to water and sewer service, those change depending on um, the characteristics in the community and their interests and what impacts their development. So in the past, sometimes we might use major roads, for example, uh, in addition to water and sewer access. But because we have these growth areas, many of which follow the major roads, we default into this. So was there a clear pattern that you saw, for example, that I mean, the commercial is going on a long term of the road, which is a major subject? I mean, that makes, right. it's common, it makes sense. Right. Was there anything surprising as far as where growth is having? It seems like uh, there's going to be between the Air Force Base and from Dallas, it seems like that, that many of the is just going to that makes sense. You expect growth to go in that direction. Well, one thing I want to comment on is if you can show one of the population employment growth maps, um, the area immediately south of the Air Force Base, which is actually changed on its map so it doesn't appear the way it used to, um, we actually staff raised the question about it. Um, and you can. Well, I don't know if I have a copy of that, but. 
Uh, if you see where Moody Air Force Base is and where it sticks out in, um, in the Lanier County, on the Lowndes County side of that, immediately south of that, we had, her model showed that there would be 2,600 new employees and I think several hundred, if not thousand, more um, housing units there. And we just said, that doesn't quite sound right. <laughs> While that area is developable, we just didn't feel that that land is actually going to develop in that area. So she actually um, put a, in her model, to project that growth, to put a cap on how much growth would actually occur there. And then it got redistributed throughout the county. So that is one example. You actually can't see it here because staff noticed that. That was surprising to us um, that that was growth was drawn to that area, but we actually told it not to go to that area uh, because we just knew that there were probably was not going to be additional 2,600 employees. Uh, we just didn't feel right for it. So. I have a question. Is that okay? How, how does it take the Moody Exclusion Zone into account? That's actually uh, what we what I ended up using to apply that reduction that Corey was just mentioning. So we assumed lower densities and intensities. I think I think that's what you're okay. asking. And something to keep in mind, for instance, when you look at these maps, this is on a county-wide scale. It is brush general patterns um, like future growth residential you see these large yellow areas and it's not indicative of residential density but of actual growth pattern is getting a new land use um, some areas such as within Valdosta the density of residential development will be much higher in terms of infill so these maps are not designed to depict that in real accurate detail 